Hello and welcome everyone. Guys, in this video I'm going to review one of the latest laptops from HP. The model number is FR2005TU. I bought this laptop almost a month ago and since then I've been using this laptop quite rigorously for my development work. I'm not a regular YouTube reviewer, but then a couple of my friends asked me to review this laptop and let them know whether this is the right laptop for developers. So let's proceed. So guys, in this review, I'm going to talk about the performance of the laptop from a software developer's perspective and whether this is the right laptop for software development work. I'm not going to talk about the performance of the laptop for gaming needs and for from a gaming point of view. Now, this is how the laptop looks like. The body is not that great. It is okay. -ish. The laptop is pretty sleek and light in weight. It has a full backlit keyboard and the screen resolution and the brightness is good enough for development requirements. Again, the build quality of the laptop is something I'm really not happy with. I just feel you have to handle the laptop appropriately uh, because I just noticed that, you know, uh, after handling, after lifting the laptop with just one hand, the power jack went out of alignment and I have to press the corners to get them, get it back in place so that I can, you know, use the power adapter. So again, not a major flop, but again, then the body quality is not that great. Uh, Talking about the ports, it has got, you know, two full size 3.0 USB ports on the left hand side. Next to that is the power jack, which is a barrel type. On the right hand side, we have a micro SD card slot. Uh, next to that is uh, the audio stereo audio slot with the mic support. On the same side, we also have an HDMI and the C type USB slot. Uh, one important thing to understand here is that the C type USB port cannot be used for charging. It is just meant for connecting external, uh, you know, peripherals, hubs or things like that. Uh, another important point here is that to maintain the sleek design and to maintain the shape of the laptop, uh, this doesn't come with a full size LAN port. So uh, I personally believe a full size uh, LAN port is not really needed because we all get a good speed and the routers have become much advanced and we do get good enough connection speed over Wi-Fi connective connections but then uh, for occasional usage of LAN port maybe for streaming 4k or you know uh, streaming games and all uh, the only thing is you might have to uh, you know buy a separate uh, USB-C to uh, multi-port adapter so so let me show you the one that I have so guys, this is one of the USB hubs that I've purchased. If you see, it has got uh, three USB ports, 3.0 standard, and it also has got a full size, uh, you know, LAN port, a normal LAN port. And the best thing about this USB hub is that it comes with a USB-C type uh, connector. What it means is that you don't have to waste a USB port uh, amongst two available on the laptop and you can simply hook, a, hook this uh, USB hub on the right hand side USB-C port. Now, once you do this, uh, this is a fully functional USB port and you can use it for connecting, you know, high speed cameras, hard drives, uh, mouse, and, and normal peripherals like mouse and keyboards and, you know, things like that. Let me provide you some details about the hardware configuration of this particular laptop. Uh, as you can see, it comes with Intel Core i5 uh, processor. It's an 11th generation processor. It comes with 8 GB of inbuilt RAM. Now, the 8 GB of uh, inbuilt RAM occupies both the slots of the laptop. What it means is like there are two 4, M 4 GB slots, uh, you know, fitted in two slots available on the laptop. Now, this is not the best configuration. I was personally not happy about it. But then, uh, you know, when when I requested the the showroom guy, he kind of supported me to remove you know both 4 GB uh, 4 GB RAMs and install 8 GB uh, RAMs in both the slots uh, so, so that I can get 16 GB of RAM which is a maximum possible RAM uh, by this particular laptop I would recommend that you install another 8 GB of RAM right at the showroom and before even buying the laptop otherwise uh, first thing is like you know it's important because you know once you start using the laptop for development requirement uh, for development purpose it 8 GB RAM might not suffice which I'm going to show you like uh, how quickly you know the 8 GB is kind of consumed uh, by a couple running just by running a couple of IDs over there and the second thing is uh, if you try to you know get it installed at the service center the the two RAMs like the 4 GB RAMs might go wasted i mean you won't you might not be able to get any value on top of it i mean you might have to go to the gray market and sell it off yourself but then the best thing uh, which i would recommend is that you get it uh, replaced right at the showroom um, and because it doesn't even void your warranty right the next feature is uh, that it comes with a one terabyte ssd now, now this was one of the most fascinating reasons for me to buy this laptop uh, because you know now most of the laptops in the market 
comes with one terabyte hard disk drive and 256 GB of uh, SSD. So 256 GB is good enough for initial installation of operating system. But the moment you fill up the hard disk to around 80% of its capacity, uh, the performance of your system is compromised, which I'm sure nobody would like to see. Uh, another thing is like this laptop comes with Windows 10 and MS Office pre-installed. It also has Alexa built in. So it means you don't need a Google dot nearby. All you can do is you can just activate the Alexa service uh, and you can just, you know, uh, give Alexa commands to kind of control the smart devices that you might have around. Uh, as I already said, the weight is pretty less. It is just uh, 1.75 kg. And uh, I mean, this is pretty decent for a laptop and you can actually carry it with a single, uh, you can actually handle it with a single hand and you can lift it up. But then looking at the build quality, I won't suggest that you kind of deal with the laptop with one hand and to ensure that your laptop stays in a good shape physically at least, you know, um, I, I suggest that you, you know, kind of use both your hands while turning on the laptop or turning off the laptop or even moving around with it. Now to uh, help you understand the performance of the laptop, the first thing that I would like to show you here is uh, uh, the boot time of the laptop and how quickly it boots and takes you to the login screen. I'm just going to turn on the laptop. And you can see that almost within you know 15 to 20 seconds uh, I was able to log in and I was able to reach uh, you know the, the desktop of my laptop. I believe this is uh, quite decent boot up time and the login time and I was not able to see any lag over there. As I told you I already have been using this laptop for almost a month and I haven't seen any you know drastic change in the boot up time and it has pretty much it has been pretty much constant to be around 15 to 20 seconds so which I believe is pretty decent. Now let me show you the launch time of couple of applications on this laptop. Along with that, I also would like to show you that why I initially suggested to get 8 GB of extra RAM installed on this machine. So, you know, I'm going to install, I'm going to launch couple of softwares on this machine and then I'm going to show you the, the, the RAM usage so that, you know, it can help you understand whether you, you need additional 8 GB or not. Alright guys, now let me show you the performance of the laptop by launching in couple of, you know, development environments. So I'm an Android engineer and I do work on mobility and I use Android Studio for that. Apart from that, I also use Arduino IDE for, you know, firmware development and things like that. So and again, you know, along with that, we, we, we all use Chrome and other, you know, supporting tools in, in the background, you know, a little, you know, running in parallel. So let me just try and launch uh, Android Studio and observe like how fast we are in business and we are able to launch our application and deploy our application on the emulator. <clears throat> now as we can see that uh, our Android Studio is up and running now, let's launch the emulator and see its launch time. Okay, well, we'll also do one thing, we will just go to the performance tab and see the current consumption of the RAM. Uh, so now it is already 9.9 .9 GB uh, with the emulator launched, right? So basically what we can see here is that uh, with the emulator in place uh, and the Android Studio setup up and running, uh, we already have gone beyond the 8 GB um, uh, mark which is the default amount of RAM that comes pre-installed with this particular device, with this particular laptop. Now let me try and launch a uh, couple of, you know, Chrome tabs. Let me also launch a YouTube video. Hi, today I'm going to talk about building a gun. Oh, I know what you're thinking about. Stop making stereotype comments. The best weapon we can get in our country is the kitchen knife. While in countries like US, you can get any type of weapon you like. And with So I hope you can see that the performance of this laptop, you know, running YouTube video and then, you know, a couple of tabs open and then, you know, having your uh, emulator, a studio running in place, it's quite decent. Uh, now let's try and launch another application and see its launch time. So I'm going to launch Postman. So 
So you can see it was pretty fast. Let me also launch MongoDB Compass. Let me also try and launch uh, the video editor tool. It's the second video editor tool that I'm going to launch on this particular machine. Let's observe the RAM usage now and I can see that it has gone to a good number of 12 GB and like almost 12.2 GB RAM is being consumed right now. And that's the reason I suggest that you go ahead and install you know, extra 8 GB of RAM because if you're not doing that, uh, your system's performance is going to get hit and uh, your system might not run as fast as you can see here. I believe if you have previous experience working with you know hefty IDs like our Android Studio and then the emulators, uh, you are going to appreciate the launch time and performance of the laptop. And uh, I mean, till now, uh, I mean, like last one month's usage, I have found the performance pretty decent and uh, pretty you know stable. I know it's too early to say uh, to give it full marks, but as of now, like my my verdict is that you know it's a good laptop for developers, and I certainly would like to recommend it. For developers uh you know but but again make sure that you install 8 gb of extra ram to it so once we have seen the performance of the laptop and you know how quickly it boots and how quick and how many applications you can run with the usage of rams and things like that uh, let me just finally give you a summary where i'm going to talk about the pros and cons so the pros are like it's lightweight the screen size is 15.6 which is you know good size for developers comes with one terabyte ssd out of the box i5 11 generation cpu which is a good enough thing and fully functional usb c port full and backlit keyboard uh, the microphones of this laptop is pretty good and you know probably will face no issues while being on your uh, zoom calls and things like that and then performance of the laptop is you know adequate the boot time is good battery performance is good the sign quality is also good now talking about the cons the build quality is not that good it doesn't have a LAN port, you know, um, number of USB ports are only two and the screen is not that bright. I mean, it's good enough for indoor use, but again, it's not the best in, in the field. Uh, and then camera of this laptop really sucks. I mean, it's not good at all. So I suggest you buy an external camera if you really go online or if you go, you know, if you really go online quite frequently and you have a lot of video calls happening around. Now, now this is the uh, cost of the laptop available online which, and it costs you around 70 you know almost 71,000 uh, with 8 GB version uh, so what I did is like I bought it from the HP showroom for 69k and this actually included the extra 8 GB RAM so I basically recommend this laptop for the developers and the students and again I believe it's not in the really low category it's a medium it's a middle category laptop it's a it's a laptop it doesn't fall in uh, the low cost category of course but then uh, you know at least i5 with 11 generation and one terabyte of SSD along with 16 GB RAM is is the configuration I would suggest that students and developers should go for Thank you for watching this video and let me know if you like the video and uh, you know leave a comment if you really want me to you know go ahead with uh, reviewing any other products because as I told you I'm not a regular YouTube reviewer and this is like you know my first ever re review on YouTube. Thank you once again have a great day guys.